Hi everyone and welcome again to Tap Into Your Creativity. We're going to try again to bring in Elizabeth with us today. Um, so Elizabeth, if you're there, just um, request to go live with me and hopefully we'll be able to connect this time. Um, just request to go live and hopefully, there we go. So you should go live right now. Okay, we're connecting. There we go. There <laughs> oh, we go. So okay. It worked. Thank you so much. Um, sure. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, that's okay. That's okay. Well, hopefully, people will start joining again. So, um, so I'm so excited that you're here. I'm happy that we connected. And, um, anyways, uh, Elizabeth, tell us where you are. Where do you live? And and what do you do? Well, first, I just want to thank you for inviting me. It's a uh, I feel honored to be part of such a great group of artists that you've already um, had on your show. And I really appreciate um, what you're doing to help, to help uh, from a charitable standpoint. So thank yeah. you for that. It's, uh, it's been an incredible ride. I have to say um, together with you guys, um, we have now over $19,250 for feeding America. So I'm very proud of it. Um, we're getting closer to the 20,000 mark and going. And, um, you know, I feel that the need now more than ever is we can't stop. You know, that's so true. That is so true. Um, well, uh, so I'll t I can give you a little bit of my background. Um, I, I live in Montana, um, but uh, we just moved here in, in July. So it's a very recent move and um from where? From Texas. Okay. Uh, yeah, and I've I've lived in a lot of different places. So I'm originally from California. Uh I moved um 8 times in 16 years. Okay. Uh and then <laughs> we stayed in Texas for 12 years. So uh and that one of those was an international um uh move and I lived in England for just over a year as well. So, um, wow. Yeah. And, uh, so I've seen a lot of the country and, um, we, we lived in Texas and we wanted to move for quite some time, but we wanted our kids to have a stable education, get through high school, um, do all that stuff. And so we did that. And, uh, this year when COVID hit, actually, we realized we could move sooner because my son's senior year was all going to be online and we listed our house and here we are. So. Oh my gosh. And, and, and once we get into your studio and you're going to show us around a little bit, I mean, your sure. view is, is priceless. It's, it's just I mean, breathtaking. It is. We feel so, uh, we're, we're very appreciative of where we live and, um, it's, very very beautiful we live uh with a view of flathead lake um here in, in in the flathead valley in big fork montana and um it's just a magical beautiful place and i've i've always really been uh connected to nature i grew up in california um in santa cruz on the beach uh we camped always went up to the sierra nevada I love the mountains. I always wanted to live in an area like this my whole life. So, um, and the really great thing is that my sister moved here with her husband. And then my mom, who's uh, 83, she moved here and built a house right around the corner. So we all live within oh, five so minutes great. of each other. Yeah. Oh my goodness. That's amazing. So you have a really beautiful um, upbringing, I believe. You were telling me a little bit about your family history. And I would love for you to share that with us. Sure. Um, I was, our family has always been um, it, not, only one artist my, was formal artist, which was my um, great aunt, Suzanne Shire. And she was actually part of the WPA in the 1930s and uh, has one of the uh, murals at the Coit Tower in San Francisco. And um really was a wonderful painter, it's very eccentric woman, kind of scary looking when you're a little kid. <laughs> but, uh, but what an she, incredible 
connection there. Like oh yeah, and and I've, I've visited her murals that she's done in in Texas and the in the post offices of Bison and Indian and um, uh, so we we used to visit her and and she would we she would paint with us and we just grew up uh, always drawing. Um, you know, just it's it was always just a part of our life. My my grandfather made um, did wood inlay and made boxes and furniture, and my grandmother um, did mosaic. Uh, my mom was a woodworker and made jewelry, and so we were always uh, there was always stuff going on, especially in Christmas time and things things like that. Uh, so I I grew up. Uh, enjoying making art and being creative, although I didn't know that that was my calling per se until I got older. And uh, my first experience career-wise, I was uh, in brand and marketing for 23 years uh, for major retailers in the U.S. and also internationally. Um, so that was quite different than what I do now, uh, but it was a good foundation in terms of teaching me um, the fundamentals of, of retail sales and marketing, branding, that type of thing. And, um, you know, uh, if we have time at the very end, um, we'll go into that a little bit more because I know that, you know, you really know your ins and outs of um, how to help um, emerging artists or even established artists on how to actually market yourself better and, and get to that point where you want to actually convert your your profession into making money and uh, you have done that beautifully um, you, you know you have an incredible um, following on Pinterest on you know here on Instagram and um, everywhere pretty much you're there and um, you've done it in a way that it's you know very profitable for you and 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 you have incredible um, product that um, I can't wait to start sharing with everyone. Um, I actually do have some pictures that I'm going to share with um, people for um, our audience that don't know the incredible craftsmanship that you do. And um, But before we get there, how did you make that transition from corporate America to now being a full-time artist? Well, you know, um, Later in my career, I, when I was younger, I was really driven to be successful. We came from a very, really kind of poor family. And um, I just wanted to make something of myself. I, I was really driven that way. Never, It was never about money or anything, but I just wanted, to, I just knew I could do something. And, and I sort of fell into it. And um, so I worked really hard and it was very satisfying for a long time. But as I got older, I just, the, it just wasn't there anymore. It felt very empty to me. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, fortunately, I, I think I got laid off and I wanted to do <laughs> consulting. I just didn't want to go work for a big retailer again. I was working for a retailer in Taiwan at the time and I was the executive VP of marketing and branding for them. Okay. And um, I just knew I needed a change and I was, selling my brushes at that time and, and making them, but it wasn't full time, but I had, I got laid off and I had all this time on my hands and uh, that my brush business really started to take, take off. And so this whole consulting idea, I kind of let go to the wayside. I didn't say too much to my partner at the time, because I know that she would have freaked out a little bit, but um, I, I, it just it just started to really work and I realized that I could make a living doing it and so I just invested a lot of time in uh, building a store on Shopify and just you know developing that business I mean th that's the thing is that you can be a wonderful artist and a terrific crafts person and you can make all kinds of great stuff but if you can't sell it um, it doesn't do a whole lot of good so I invested that time that I had when I wasn't going into an office every day for 12 hours or whatever to to building this business. And um, that's kind of how it all came together. So I guess since you touched about this, um, uh, how, how do you even, did you decide that because you had the knowledge on how to start your business and then you said, okay, this is what I need to start with. 
these are my goals and I'm going to go from A to Z instead of Z to A, which a lot <laughs> of people do, right? Because um, I think you got it right the first time. So um, what do you think that that's the formula that actually worked for you that might work for others? Well, I think um, you have to know, I, I think there's a, there's a lot of different things involved in, in um, you know, I mean, depending on what you're doing, and obviously, I, I work within a, a a very very niche, very kind of narrow niche um, with making. Uh, my primary income comes from selling and making brushes, um, and so I I have a I I can really target what I'm doing to a specific audience, and that that's helpful. Um, but I think uh, what's really important is that you have to know. Uh, who you are, you have to know who your audience is, you have to be able to, um, you know, build something that fundamentally feels uh, professional. So it, it just, it just takes a lot of time. I mean, I think the, uh, one of the keys, especially today, uh, in the online world is you have to build an audience, you have to have traffic. Um, you can always go on Etsy, uh, but Etsy is very crowded. And, and there's a lot of limitations, you don't really own your site. And you're really bound by their rules. And we do run two Etsy shops. Um, my partner's a potter, so we we sell on Etsy um, her pottery. And I, I have another little side business um, that I, I restore uh, shave gear because I, I like doing restoration. Um, but it also gives me another uh, place for income. So it's a diversified, you know, it diversifies my our income into three different areas, not just relying on one thing. Um, but but those are you, you in order to, to build a business, you have to have traffic. So you have to invest in where that is going to come from. And m the majority of what I've invested in is social media and Instagram, Facebook and Pinterest. And um, a lot of times I think people have the um, capability to make and to create, um, but they don't spend and invest the time in those areas in order to be able to bring it all together. Um, right. So from a business standpoint, those are the things, those are some considerations you have to think about. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think that, you know, now that, you know, we're in this middle of the pandemic and I, I mean, I'm, I'm, how, how are you doing with, with it all? Have your sales been consistent? Have you been able to work? Um, you moved in the middle of it. Like how, how is it for yeah. you? I mean, oddly enough, um, it's been a good year. Uh, this this end, last end of the year, I think the uh, economic crunch is starting to hit people more, and you can see it in their spend. Um, at the beginning of the pandemic, actually, my business was up because so many people were online, stuck at home, and all they did was you know surf the internet. So, <laughs> so <laughs> there was a, a huge uh, kick up in traffic. Yeah. And uh, exactly. And um, so I saw a huge increase in traffic during those two months. And then the, the business has been pretty steady. This month has been um, very, very slow. So I, you know, like anybody, you worry about um, what's going to happen. It's the flows, right? It's like, yeah. It's like so, but, yeah, exactly. But you also have a history and you can see that history and you just have to be okay to weather those, you know, you have to be able to weather those ups and downs and not get completely freaked out. And you have to just take action. So if you see something happening, you've got to do something different, right? You can't just, you know, keep doing the same thing. Right, so. right. And we talk about, you know, on Instagram, the algorithms went, you know, all over the place, um, especially with the election and all that, that changed yeah. tremendously. And, um, you know, a lot of people that were in the path of, you know, building up and whatever it was it came to a halting stop you know and so you have to yes. kind of just figure it out and like you said weather it off and maybe try something different and maybe you know invest that time into your website into pinterest into facebook um and um just diversify yourself um without losing your yourself because i right. think sometimes you know, we are so invested in what social media is that we kind of lose ourselves and you don't want to do that. 
No, and, and I think the other thing is you can see it happening right now in the art world with so many people creating um, like art academies and online um, connections because I teach workshops too and I didn't teach one workshop this year. So, you know, I, I wasn't going to teach in part person workshops with COVID. I have, you know, I, you know, like everybody, I just didn't want to put my family and myself at risk. Right. Um, I'm thinking about next year and I, I have, um, workshops that I'll be teaching in Texas next year. And I'm going to, uh, I really want to teach, uh, uh, brush making workshops here in Montana. And you um, and I might be collaborating too. So, yes, um, yes. so it's all about that, right? Making connections, collaborating with people, opening up yourself to new things and, and getting out of your comfort zone. I always say that. Yeah, I mean, for sure. You, If you're going to do something like, uh, you know, go out your, on your own and, and do your own thing, you have to be okay with uh, just taking risks and some uncertainty because, because there is no certainty. It's, 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 you know, it's just, it's, it's a whole different kind of thing, but um, it's hugely satisfying though. And I mean, I wouldn't have it any other way. So um I just, you know, and I'm just a worker. I, I'm somebody who's a doer. I have to be doing stuff. I am. I'm very, I, I, yes. I, I don't yeah. function without a routine. And for me, just being busy and having my mind occupied helps me through this pandemic as well and, and through my yes. life, really. But, you know, so I don't get so emotional about it because otherwise I, I wouldn't be able to function. So yeah, um, the whole purpose true. of tap into your creativity is to ignite you know, and inspire people at home and, and, you know, and tell them that, yes, you can do so many new things and, and just, you know, put yourself out there and try them. And um, while I'm saying that, I actually tried your incredible um, brush that you made for me. And um, I tried them and I can tell you that I've never experienced something so beautiful. Um, from the way that you grab this when you're painting and you're actually, um, you know, putting pressure on it, it feels like just such a different type of um, instrument. I don't even want to call it like a brush. It's more like a my delicate, but I use it and I also put it in my, um, on my idea board because they're inspiration for me. So, Thank you so, so, so much. I do have some pictures that I would love for you to um, talk about. Um, oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's the thing. I think the thing that's, one of the things that's so satisfying for me is that I originally started making brushes as a way to kind of disrupt my own art practice because I was just, it was kind of by rote, some of my favorite brushes, and I wanted something that was just going to, you know, make it different. And um, so I started making feather brushes, and it was my, it's when I was also traveling and a lot to Taiwan and, um, you know, just experiencing the Asian culture and, and brush making and, and sumi and all this stuff coming together. Um, and that's exactly what I hope that my art tools do is help to inspire something to disrupt, to create some tension, to do something different, unexpected. And I think that that really is a powerful thing um, in anybody's uh, practice. That brush in particular is the Mariella brush. And that was something I created specifically for a customer who wanted uh, a brush like that um it's a fantastic brush it's hard to make <laughs> what, what um what are the um it's a uh, horse hair it um is. yeah and it's a little bit uh softer it's a gray horse hair um the color doesn't matter as much as just the the horse hair is, has a, some some stiffness but a little softer and absorbent but you can see the mark that brush can make it's just a and, and what was so fun about it for me is that she wanted something, it gave me an idea. So I was like, oh, I, I know exactly what I can do for that. And, um, you know, and then I make it and, and then I, I make them and I sell them online. So I love working with um, artists 
to design and create specific brush, brushes for them that they yeah. want to do specific things because I am a, a problem solver. That, that's something that I've always been good at. So it's I'm good at developing and designing tools. This brush here is a is a, a fiber brush made out of a really beautiful fiber from Africa. It's very strong. It has a very stiff, coarse bristle, but that's great for like making texture in cold wax or any kind of gel medium. In this right there, I was just using a regular ink. So you can either just use just a ink, um, any any anything like that as well. It's just a it's a fantastic brush. It's really wide, nine inches. So if you're working really big, you could do super bold. You know, I just love that. I love that. Yeah. I love it's the different a, like. I'm sorry that they're like not. I can't. Um, bring it down so we can see the brush on that one, but it's probably yeah. That's a, that was a fan brush. These are all cold wax tools, and that's the other thing that I've done too is I've developed specific tools for medium that don't have a lot of tools. So, you know, I developed uh, specific glazing brushes that work great for glazing with cold wax. Um, there's some there. They're very coarse, blunt brushes. They they hold up to all kinds of scrubbing and just they're just workhorse brushes um, for cold wax artists. And um, I, I, I'll work with specific artists and, and uh, Rebecca crawl has some of those. Uh, I, I make a, that that's actually um, a carbon um, paint, black carbon paint that I make for encaustic monotype because I also make a whole line of tools for encaustic monotype silicone tools that were developed. Again, um, there's some, for an area that doesn't have specific tools. So I created uh, a bunch of tools that are all very specific for mark making on uh, the heated plate with encaustic um, paint. So but I think that you can, I mean, it's, yes, it's for encaustic, but I also believe that you can use that with, especially with the liquid acrylic. Oh, totally. Yeah. Um, you know, because the mark yeah. making is, is definitely there, especially with these, all of these that we can't see the tips, but they all have, you know, some sort of like a, um, a shape at the, at the very yeah. end of it, at the tip of it. And so you can create that, you know, um, yes. And, uh, I mean, like I, have, I said, um, yeah. you use a lot of bamboo and, um, and I love the way it feels because it just, it's so different than your normal brush it just um it adds that it factor um for me at least um as a painter um i did a video of myself um that i i i have somewhere in my instagram that i was using this with mm -hmm. me and um you know and i was so afraid to use it <laughs> in the beginning because i you know it, it's like such a precious thing that i have um, but then I learned that, you know, you follow your instructions and how to, you know, clean them up and, and uh, hang them and, and it's really brand new and, um, and I, I just, I love it. I, I, I'm a huge believer on, on, on your craft and, and how beautiful they are. And, Thank you. Um, I mean, I think one of the really, bamboo is very prolific in Texas. So I had a unending supply and I love bamboo. It is an amazing material. I mean, it grows like a weed. It's strong. It has a lot of interesting uh, aspects to it. And it also involves burning, which I love using a torch because I'm an encaustic painter as well. And, you know, so it has to be cured and I do it through burning, but I also use the burning as a way to make the handle more beautiful, in my opinion. And, yeah, for sure. Um, you know, I love bamboo, but I have to say that. Um, like anything, like any artist, you're always in, I mean, I'm inspired by my surroundings uh, often. And being here in Montana um, has been really um, wonderful because there's so much beautiful driftwood and just other kinds of materials now that I'm starting to integrate um, into my practice. And I, I you could see uh, one of the pictures you showed a minute ago was a, a deer tail um, Oh. which has a beautiful flog pointed. I can make these beautiful pointed brushes. Um, that's all, you know, from here in Montana. And, um, you know, so I'm, 
I'm connecting. And, and my artist statement is all about connections because those are the things that have really influenced me the much, the most. And um, so that connection between this place and what I'm doing and what I'm making, and you can see it, you know, and it just, it's just, I mean, there's a brush that I made using a beautiful piece of wood. And I, I mean, to me, they're like treasures, you know, I, I, I'm just is amazed. Is the top of it ceramic? Yeah, um, Kim, my partner Kim is a potter, so she makes all of my ferals for me. Oh, wow. And yeah, I'm lucky I have it here. I could just yes, make it. <laughs> no kidding. What and, about uh, this so, one? Uh, that one is a, actually, that's a brush I designed. I've got, I, I, um, I, I make them with both fiber, it, you know, it's like a fan brush. But I had, a, again, I had a customer that wanted to do like these wider strokes. Um, so I developed that brush for her specifically so that she could do like these grassy kind of line and marking and mark making. Um, so it's just another example of a customer asking me for something specific and just developing a, a brush for it. Yeah, like, I and mean, then the, you know, you can see how it pushes down and it's just very different from your regular brush. It's just, you know, oh, yeah. you're at a whole different level here. And I and I do I do combine the traditional some of the traditional shapes of the larger sumi brushes um, with my brushes. I I am an artist, so I I do really put a lot of care into creating the brushes. I mean, to me, they're I don't know. I just I every aspect of it I think about when I when I'm making something. Right. Um, but they are artist tools. For me, it's super important that it's not just pretty to look at, that it's actually a fantastic brush or a fantastic tool that is going to be something that people actually use. And that is, uh, so when I cut the head and all of the heads of the, I, I do everything by hand. I mean, I cut and shape them all. Um, I, I use, you know, all kinds of different scissors and texturing to create the flow so that when it hits the paper, it's going to flow on the paper and not have a lot of blunt edges. And, um, you know, these are things that, I, that I've learned how to do. So, you know, when I shape a head, like a nice round head or more of a traditional singing head, I have all kinds of different horse hair. I have stiff to very, very fine um, I, I do import it um, from a brush making specific place in China where they make all uh, traditional Asian brushes. And um, so it's it's very high quality, the materials that I use. And um, you can tell. I mean, I, mean I, me. I can tell. I, I certainly can tell. Even from, you know, the detail that you put at the very end of, of your brushes and um you know how you can just um hang them um you know they become like a, a a piece of art itself and so um i i just highly recommend them and um i can't wait to get my own full collection of elizabeth's <laughs> brushes because <laughs> they inspire me so much i love them so much um so the one that we're looking at right now um yeah you are so generous and um you are going to be donating this brush together with that painting mm -hmm. um, so do you want to tell us a little bit about this two things that you are sure sure i mean the, yeah sure the painting is uh an uh, a basic enzo painting done with a traditional chinese uh ink um, it is done with a brush that I made and it's on a very beautiful, well, I like the paper. It's the paper is a paper that I purchased in Taiwan. Um, and it just has a very wonderful property of the ink just kind of um, feathers absorbs. out. It kind of absorbs it. Like, yeah, right? it's a, it's a very, yeah, it's a very absorbent paper. It doesn't have a lot of, you know, like sizing in it. Um, I mean, I, that's one of the things about when I was working in Taiwan, I mean, the paper I could buy, all the, it was wonderful. Um, I have to go back and get more. I still have quite a lot, but I, I, um, and when you do, will you get me some? <laughs> maybe, well, it's possible, but so the painting, the, the chop, both those chops, the top chop is my name, Elizabeth, 
um, in the bottom chop is a chop that I bought at the uh, antiques market in Taiwan, and it basically talks about bamboo, um, which I have an affinity towards. <laughs> I love bamboo, so it, it works for me. Um, and then the brush is a shorter handled um, uh, deer, uh, white deer tail. It comes to, has a natural flog, um, and it comes to a beautiful pointed tip. Uh, those are very special. Um, they're hard to make, actually, um, working with the, the deer tail and getting the shape of the brush head. It's, it's not the easiest, but boy, um, they're, they're, they just make a wonderful, um, a wonderful brush head. And, uh, so, um, just to do a little pause here. Um, so we are asking $375 for both of them and 100% of the proceeds will go to Feeding America. So um, I really hope that you consider buying this today or the next few days and uh, just DM me or Elizabeth for all the information, but you would be helping so many people in need of food. Um, so this is an incredible opportunity to not only um, help people, but um, in turn get this incredible, gorgeous artwork by Elizabeth and a brush, which um, made by her. So you, you couldn't get any better than that. Um, and um, by looking at this painting, to me, um, you know, it's like the circle of life, right? The infinity, the um, it has that energy that what you put out in the world comes right back. And it just feels like all this good energy that you have done and um, it, it kind of translates that to me. So I love it. I absolutely love it. Oh, thank you. I mean, I think Enzo, when I teach my brush uh, making courses, we usually, um, we make brushes the first, the first day uh, and then we do a lot of painting um, and we do an Enzo because Enzo really is about going inward relaxing i mean you have to be relaxed and you have to be able to just move and any like that's the thing about um you know especially with these larger brushes uh they show everything so if you if you're tied or up tight or tense it's going to show so <laughs> so i think the the beautiful thing about um a nice enzo and i do think that one's a nice enzo is it's just flowing it has a natural curve and it doesn't have that hesitation and um that's that's something that when i do a painting like that that i look for because you know it's the 10 that don't work out and the one that just happens to be okay <laughs> exactly 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 that's that's you know like we always say right it takes a hundred to get to the one and hopefully yeah. you get to the one and um, I do think this is this is just amazing and lovely, and I can't thank you enough. So sure. now you're going to take us around um, sure. the studio and show us around, and I can't wait for you guys to see this. Um, okay. I did try to tidy up. I, <laughs> I, I've been very busy. It's a busy time of year, but um, this is uh, in our house, in our new house in Minnesota, We, I mean, Montana here, we converted most of our downstairs into uh, studio space, uh, pottery, and then uh, this is where I make my brushes. Um, so I'll just- Can, we, can you go a little closer so we can see the brushes that you're, they're hanging there? Yeah, I'm, I will. I, I had to move my office in here because oh. my son's living with Did us. Look at that view. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're very lucky. Um, so let me just kind of, here's some, uh, materials i i always keep like a, a lot of bamboo and things um around in certain sizes and um oh I, the feathers oh those that's actually those are tail pieces oh. from and then there's some lavender that i got out of the garden these are some of the i i have some very large brushes um wow. like this brush oh my has gosh a really gorgeous i mean the hair uh, that head of that brush is a uh, super beautiful and i mean you know um it's expensive but i was looking today a friend of mine was wanting me to make a larger brush and she found it online it was 550 mine's i have to say it's better 
you know so yeah, it's gorgeous my goodness put your yeah, hands against it again you, i mean it is one, huge yeah it's wow. a very what kind of hair did you use there that's a horse hair but it's one that has a natural flog on the end um wow. and then this one is also this is a stiffer uh i have a dragon's all carved on the whole handle I don't know if you can see it, but all the yeah. way around, there's yeah. a dragon carving wow. from top to bottom. I do a lot of scraffito work um, on pottery, okay. and I work with a lot of traditional images. I, I like using also these beautiful pieces of driftwood that I find um, as a brush rest. Yeah. So I make them into a brush rest. Oh, that's and those, beautiful. Yeah, and then, you know, here's... Uh, I just wow. store them here. Uh, I have a lot. <laughs> How long does it take you to create, um, you know, to create them, do you think? It depends, you know, what I'm making and how big it is. This is a painting that I did with a feather brush. I think I told you about it yesterday. Yes, yes. Um, and I loved how it came out. It's one of my favorite paintings. Um, and it's just... It was all painted with a feather brush, a couple different wow. feather brushes. And you can see the wonderful kind of dynamic mark making, a lot of energy. I, I felt like it was just very successful. Yes, um, I agree. And, you know, and then it's this like is like mark a, making with something so different. And you don't expect it's a very unexpected way of exactly. Painting. And then this is some of the just uh some of the handles that i have they're not they're not done yet but this is all stuff i just set aside that i like i think did you find you know, them did you say oh, you yeah, find them is, in the woods and then you um bring these them are all the yeah by great by the lake um we call it the boneyard over at north shore there's just all kinds of <laughs> there's all kinds of driftwood and to me it's like a little treasure chest of stuff right. And, and then I have like I'll, I'll have stuff like this, which is all just things I can use, um, you know, just like I think anybody, you know, when you have it. And then this is my workbench. I use a like a Fordham type drill a lot. This this tool. Oh, cool. Here, yeah. I, I use that for carving and also just um, just every day, just when I'm making and uh, yeah. So this is where I I work. All your wires and. and yeah. yeah, and then underneath there's um, a bunch more bamboo. It's all sized by like different sizes. Uh, so You're really well I'm organized. I'm I'm very impressed. I, well, you know, I I think I told you yesterday. I'm not one. I don't like um, I don't like being I don't like chaos. And then like sometimes I'll find a piece of wood that's just so weird, like this piece here, and. Uh, I just had to make something out of it. So I, I made this brush that I haven't used or sold yet. I have to, uh, but it would make like a fantastic. Oh yeah. Uh, oh, wow. just real good, you know, yes. <laughs> really good, but it's just so weird. But you know, it was sitting there and I just, I don't know. It just it's said, like a, okay. It's like a cane slash golf club. Yeah. I want to be a brush. <laughs> so there it is. <laughs> And, and, and it sits right there. I mean, it's fabulous. Yeah. I mean, and probably like when I teach a class, uh, I always bring big, big brushes so we can do big paintings and stuff. So yeah. I'll take you. So, and then this is where I have a lot of stored things. Um, when I'm making brushes, I, I use pieces of bamboo to um, put the ho horse hair in and just really uh, flatten it and and pa compact it yeah. so it's all nice and straight. And I see one there that is well. like a white one that you have right there um, standing up, I guess. Oh, oh, this is a, yeah, this was a, a fail. I, I wanted to make um, makeup brushes, but goat stinks. So <laughs> they keep, no matter what, I couldn't get the smell out of it. So oh my I, I put little uh, like bamboo carving in it and everything but you know just you have to you, you have, have to fail. try you have to, you have try. to fail yeah. everybody has failures I'll, I'm going to take you to the other part of my studio great this used to be our tv room now it's my son's room <laughs> <laughs> until he goes back to school oh, so wow. this is this is uh close the door here 
Um, yeah, this is where I do my printmaking. Um, and costing? Are, I have lots and lots of tools <laughs> because I make them. Although all the really nice ones always get sold. I get all the rejects, but... Um, That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I like working with carbon. So this plate right now isn't hot, but um, uh, this is where I would do encaustic monotype. Um, and How also, big is that table? Table. How big is your encaustic table? It's 16 by 22. It's a single plate, Roland. I, I, you had Paula on. It's one of her Roland hot box. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then I, I also. the biggest, work... biggest ones, which I mean, yes. I, oh, I would love to try one of her biggest, like. I, I, oh I, I can't even remember. It was like four by six, I believe. Yeah, it's like four four plates or so. And then yeah. um, I have uh, just, you know, this is just where, here's the painting and the brush. Yes. And then these are some other brushes. I was doing a little test video. Um, and then this is a, a monotype that I do, I did. Did with my well, tools. you got to tell us why, you know, you lived in Asia, too. You traveled to Asia a lot. And so that's where your inspiration and your knowledge really came from. Yeah, I mean, I, um, uh, I, we lived in Malaysia when I was a little kid for three and a half years. This is, this is more um, monotype. And again, it's all, I do a lot of um, wow. carbon. I love and then this is this is one that I did just with. Uh, I really like that one, even though uh, me it's very too. Is that but, one um, of your one of your tools, right? Yeah, yeah. It's just a it's just a monotype with carbon, and it, I used a tight line, what I call a tight line tool, which is uh, this guy over here. Oh yeah, it's a silicone. Like that. Yeah. I don't know if it's that. If that's nice and nice and then and it, yeah these are drawing tools this one here um is that silicone? Again, silicone. Yeah, silicone right yeah yeah and that i would use to do more of the this type of print making if i'm doing a versus the more organic stuff over there what kind of paper do you use this is the asian paper it's really beautiful um very, I mean, it makes them, it's really nice for encaustic monotype. It's very smooth, absorbent. Um, same thing here with this, just a different type. Um, I bought a lot of paper when I lived in Asia, uh, or not lived, but I felt like I lived there. But, um, <laughs> and then there's just a little bit of print storage. So this is where I do my printmaking. Um, I'm going to start painting with encaustic again. I'm feeling the urge. So this is one of my encaustic paintings. Uh, oh. I'll be doing something I'm sure that reflects the environment that I'm in now. Yeah, um, you'll have to, I'm sure. Yeah, it's just, it's impossible not to. And then because I run an online business, uh, this is where the magic happens when I uh, have to pack everything up. So <laughs> I spend a lot of time in here. Um, and so, yeah, I pack, I pack and ship and that's part of it. You know, you got to do the whole thing. So, um, so you're your fulfillment center as well. Yeah. And then this is where we have all of our um, glazing and glazes and some clay and just storage. All my paintings are stored back underneath the house. And the but pottery is also done in your house? Yeah, the pottery is done here. Um, we have a pottery studio. This is some of the scraffito work. I don't wow. know if you can see it very well. Yes, you can. Um, just a dragon. And uh, this is well, a, it's not just a dragon. I mean, it has a lot of detail in it. <laughs> <laughs> and then, well, and here's some new inspiration. Like, so these are some of the newer stuff. That, wow. uh, like the birch and a, and a trout. We like to fish, actually. So we do a oh. lot of. Uh, oh, my gosh. Fishing. So. Wow. And then so some, much detail. And the glazing some, is perfect. Some simple. Yeah. So we do, we do a lot. I mean, so I'm, I work in a lot of, do a lot of different stuff, I guess. Yes. <laughs> You're a, a, a multi um, faceted artist for sure. Yeah. Wow. But, um, it's kind of nice. You know, you get a break, I, I guess. A variety, I've always liked variety. I get bored if I'm doing too much of the same thing. So yeah. 
Yeah. It's always good. But um, yeah, so this is this is the space and it's just a super it's a super nice space for us. And then um, we have the pottery studio there, but we have, uh, and then this is our wow. looking out onto the lake. Yeah, it's and this is the bottom, the bottom story of our house we converted into studio space, so. Yeah, very yeah. blessed to have that space, that's for sure. Yes, there. for sure, I'm gonna move back into the other room. Okay, great. And we do have like 10 more minutes, so um, we could maybe talk about, um, what what is your knowledge that you want to have us as artists um, know about strategic ways of getting yourself and your work? Um, if you want to just talk about what has worked for you. Yeah, sure. Now, let me see if I can get this back into my thing again. <laughs> without falling over that's always yes that's always fun you did it, you did it. um well uh and i'm gonna turn back comments in case of you guys have um any questions this will be a great time what i would say um there's so many different things but i think following your passion for one is really important um and not allowing anything, any one thing to define you. So you don't have to be just a painter. You don't have to be just a brush maker. You don't have to be, you don't have to be what anybody thinks you should be. I'm very short waisted. So I'm like feeling like Thank I need to. Thank you, Deborah. I just suit. saw that. We will look for that. Thank you. Um, but I think just allowing yourself to try different stuff and to explore um, you know, I think that every time I get an idea for a new tool or something, I have this huge amount of excitement. Um, and it, it's very, it's fulfilling, you know, for, for me. Um, but I think if you're not happy and you, you need a change, then figure out how to make that change. And, um, I mean, I tell my kids, you know, follow your passion because you can work and make money and do all that stuff, but if it's not satisfying, then there'll be something missing inside that needs yeah. to be needs to be there. And um, you know, and then you have to do the work because it is a heck of a lot of work <laughs> to uh, to do it. And you know, I used to get in trouble. Why are you posting so much? Why are you doing? But it's consistency. So if I was going to say. Um, for social media, the, the things that are important, um, know your audience. So, you know, you can have a hundred thousand people on social media, but if none of them are interested in buying what you're selling, then it's pretty useless. So less is better if it's more targeted. Um, right. so know your audience, um, can be consistent. You can't post two things one week and then 10 the next and then nothing for three weeks. And then, you know, uh, you've got to post, Daily, you have to be, whatever you post needs to be good. So um, I try really hard. I, I don't always succeed. I have fails like everybody else. But, um, you know, just try to take good shots and pictures. I mean, it's really important. You have to be able to be, I think photography plays a huge role in our social media world. You have to have um, intriguing content. And we were talking about this yesterday. I'm not much of a storyteller. I, I'm not very good at that, that um, aspect. Some people really are, you know, you go onto their Instagram feed and they've written this great story about what they're doing. And they, it, it's, it's a, uh, I wish I could be like that, but I'm just not. So, you know, I try, I push myself to try to do better. Um, but I think where I am okay is I can take good photography, um, mix it up a little bit with life and not all work, you know, just all work and no play is boring. So you want to, uh, people to get to know you a little bit. Yeah. Um, and like I said, just be consistent, make a commitment and it takes a lot of time. It takes time. I mean, Instagram, for example, which we're on right now, I mean, it takes forever to yeah. get, to take up, 
I mean, I don't know. I've been on Instagram <laughs> for I don't know how many years, and I still have only like I don't know forty five hundred something you know followers or something like that. It takes forever. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, then, and like I said, they changed the rules and stuff. And people always say, like, you know, what I've been listening and I, what, what I've been hearing is, you know, your email list is very important. You know, oh, your, your newsletter, email. put yourself, you know, out there and let them know what you're doing now and how you're doing it. And, you know, and, and keep the people that really are interested in your work um, knowing about you um, and having that connection. You said the email list. Email list is critical. Like that is super, super important. And artists that are just showing at shows, keep that, get your book, take those email addresses, communicate to those people. And I know how hard it is because, um, believe me, I know how hard it is. But I can tell you, um, like for me, email is the most effective marketing tool I have. Um, and that list is super important because those are people that have said, hey, I want to hear from you. Um, so, yeah, that's that's so true. It just I think, you know, if you and if you don't know what to do, you can get help. There are people, um, uh, you know, I've done consulting with people to help them. Um, you know, you know, find somebody that can help you. Um, yes. And if you can afford it, have people do the things that you hate to do, but you know, you have to be able to afford it. So, exactly. Exactly. you know, I can't exactly. really afford it. Exactly. I would love to exactly. And know what your priorities are. And my friend Sergio Gomez says, you know, like when you're writing your goals, you know, if your goal is like to go and clean your, your studio, but it's going to take you three months to do it. Maybe you hire someone, yep. they'll do it in a week, and then you will be free and you can use, utilize that, you know, space much more often. And um, I, think, I think, too, if, if you have a lot of heavy lifting to do, it can be a burden and it can stop you from moving forward. So I think it's always, a, it's always though, it's a balancing act between, you know, how do you afford it? How do you afford someone to help right. you with your website? How do you... Well, you know, who even knows what kind of website you need? Uh, you know, I can really recommend Shopify as a uh, Shopify is fantastic. That is the platform I use for my store. Um, it's a great place for e-commerce. Uh, they have everything you need. Um, you know, you still have to build it and, and, and it, it takes time to learn how to use it. But it's a really, really good, solid solution. And, yeah. you know, if you if e-commerce is part of your your strategy then you would want to think about you know do i you know maybe etsy is right you know we use etsy for pottery because we just don't have the audience that and we're not able to to drive the traffic that we would need um i just happen to have the audience so i could drive my own traffic so that's why i'm not on etsy you know what i can do it pinterest? myself pinterest is a fantastic social media tool for creatives because we create a lot of visual content content and, um, you know, Pinterest is all about discovery and visual discovery. So people go to Pinterest to find things. They don't buy. So the conversion rate on Pinterest is much lower than other um, platforms. But uh, it drives a huge amount of traffic for me. Um, and it's a way to be found. So, again, um, you know, I have a free guide. I gave it to you. You could just go on my website and download it to, to create a business account for Pinterest if you're a creative and I, it's, I would recommend it. It's a very, it, and it, you know, like, like you said, it's changing, <laughs> you know, the algorithms have changed. It's gotten yeah. a little harder. Yeah, um, it's, it's definitely but, harder. But uh, I mean, I, I still have a million uh, follow, follow. I mean, I have a million impressions or more than a million impressions a month on content from, from Pinterest. I get Which is a incredible. Lot of I mean, it's, it's yeah. really, it's remarkable. And, um, you know, and, and, and maybe you and I will talk about Pinterest another whole nother time, but yeah, because um, I know you're very, very knowledgeable about about that and um, how it has. I mean, I know that you said it has not conversion the rate that you would want to, but it gives you all the um, traffic. It moves it to your hub. Yeah, I mean, is, it's it's 
it's helping you be it's it's expanding your audience exponentially and um again it's a it's a very effective way to um generate traffic and on when you're in an online business and and a, no matter what it is a creative business you have to have that to to succeed do you um, use uh, linkedin at all i don't linkedin was what i used for my professional career and i don't find it to be that helpful for me in what I do now. I think that um, I'd rather spend my time on Pinterest and um, Instagram and, and Facebook um, because I just get more return. I, I And I think maybe just because it's my past life, I just don't want to have, I don't know, just doesn't feel very congruent. You know, it's like, I don't want to be back with all, you know, I have a, thousands of people I know on Pinterest and they all know me as a totally different career. So yeah, I just, exactly. I just don't, I just don't do that. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, where can we find you? Tell us um, everywhere where we can find you. You can find me on Instagram. You can, I, I'm almost out of friends on Facebook. I have also have a business Facebook page too, but, um, I spend most of my time on my personal page, but I will accept friendships there as well. And what well. is your business account? It's Elizabeth Schwacher. And I would say if I was going to give a piece of brand advice today to artists or makers, you use your name. Don't call yourself, you know, I don't know, the just use your name. And my name's a big, ugly you know, 13 letter last you're name. Not, you're not preaching to the right person because my last name is Svella Movicius, but I have to shorten it because, I mean, my husband, who's a physician, they know him as Dr. Isaac, and they think that Dr. Isaac is really his last name because Svella Movicius was never going to yeah. happen. It was just too impossible to happen. It is pretty, it is pretty, uh, I would say it's, it's, a, it's a mouthful for sure. Yeah. But, I, yeah. but, you know, uh, we're proud you want to of it. Let's by your name. Proud of it. Yeah, you have. I mean, if you're an artist, people need to know who your name your name is so they can look yeah. you up. Yeah. If it's like, uh, I don't know, in the hills art. Yes. You know, nobody's gonna know who you are. So you, when you're a creative and a maker, your brand really is you. Yes. So I, I say embrace it. So <laughs> you want to find me? It's Elizabeth <laughs> Walker Art. It's pretty easy. Um, I think I, I think I butchered it on our on our first one, but I'm happy that you uh, you brought it into life. So um, yes. okay. And uh, what is your website? It's elizabethshawkerart.com. Um, and uh, yes, and I, you know that's my my uh, I do everything there. I don't have a separate website for art or anything like that. Um, and then. Uh, uh, I have links to my our Etsy store and pottery. It's it's on on my site on the so about one page. Place, a one place shop, which is great. It is. That's yeah. where you go, and you can email me. Yeah, I have my phone number, my email, Perfect. everything there, so Perfect. you can contact me easily. So um, yes, I I I have a feeling that maybe Deborah wants our artwork for Feeding America, which I really hope she does. And um, we'll keep making money for the people in need. And um, go to um, Elizabeth's website and Facebook and Pinterest. Um, but please, please, please look at this incredible artwork. And um, Deborah, yes, thank you so much. I think we sold um, your pieces today. Yay! I'm so excited. Yay! Um, Deborah, right after here, um, Elizabeth will get a hold of you and will tell you how to move forward with this. But I can't thank you enough. Um, and Elizabeth, thank you so much for being part of my army of artists. You're an incredible You're human being. And I'm so, so happy that our paths have crossed. Yes, me too. And thank you so much. For, it was a really fun and I enjoyed it. So thank you. Thank Have you. a wonderful holiday, everybody. Yes, happy Thanks holidays. Today. Oh, by the way, I'm taking off for a little bit. So happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. And uh, we shall see you next year, God willing. Okay. Bye. Right. Take care.